When you're working with tools, when you're working with tools, you see all kinds of things. One sec. Let's take my hairband out. It's true, you know. Oh, oh, my headband. My little Tarzan hair. Hello? Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, have you got something to drink? Yeah, not the apple juice. What is it? I've got a mixed fruit copperberg. Oh, I tell you what, right. I am never going to... Uh, you've You've known this for a while now, but I'm never going to purchase a beer ever again. Why? They're, they're oh, disgusting. Cause oh, because you've had cider now and whiskey and stuff. Yeah, I've just like... There yeah, is dog no shit. Point. A load of guys just walking around pretending it tastes nice. I don't yeah. get it. I don't get it. I, like, I when I start to drink beer, when I put it to my mouth, I gag. And my body says, you're better than that. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's, I genuinely gag. And I remember <laughs> it was a problem because at uni, we used to have like these funnels where they pour like oh, beer and geez. all this crap in. I remember doing a funnel of milk, beer, oh. red wine... Um, mustard. Did you lose a ring of fire dog or something? biscuits. Uh, nah, they just do random stuff, don't they? Because it's like funny and all that stuff. Um, uh, and they used to put like colouring in milk, and then you'd throw it up, and it'd be like this like green or blue fountain like fired across the garden. Um, it was great. But Chandler yeah, Dragon. you sound um, you sound a bit quieter, and I'm maxed out on everything. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. It could be me. I just bumped up my game. <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit nicer. Feels yeah. like you're here now. Um, so yeah, yeah. So I, I, I tell you what. Um, I've had gin recently. Yeah, I bought some really. Well, Dad bought me some really nice gin. Was that birthday or just bought you it? Yeah, but kind of birthday. Yeah, basically yeah. that was that's been my presents for my birthday. Yeah, mate, console yourself. So, yeah. Um, well, I asked explicitly. Gin's a big one. A lot gin... of people I know say like getting into gin is like there's a level to it, right? Well, I have it with tonic water. Oh yeah, you don't drink on it. Well, yeah, no, I, I, hope, haven't... I hope no one drinks on its own. Poor. We used to do a shot of gin when we played pool at J Ray's house. Oh, geez. and uh, it's like shot of gin. And I remember at J Ray's house, the shot glasses Burned they're like du- they're like double shot glasses. Oh god. And it's like, you know, a shot, the best thing about it is the fact that you can just knock it back and yeah, like, yeah. it's gone. It's yeah, like yeah. medicine. You just get it gone. Yeah. You can't with that. You'd like do that. And then there's another bit waiting for oh, you. God. <laughs> <laughs> At which point you just fly, almost fire it back out, honestly. Well, here's the thing. I, I can't, I can't do Jaeger bombs. Oh, I'm banging on Jaeger bombs. I can't get it all that down in my room. I can't, I can't, um. I can't get it down in one go. It's too much. It's too much um, liquid to drink in, in one go. So I think we've got to get into it because I think that's a, and I want to talk about booze quite a lot. And uh, you start with Jaeger bombs. So I think it's my turn to introduce. But obviously, um, on this occasion, our guest will be introducing. So take it away. Why are we here? What's it all about? And um, I came to the conclusion that uh, what what really matters is trying to understand the right questions to ask. Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Just Swim cast, the podcast devoted entirely to furthering our species through talk and discussion. My name's Tim. My name's Woody. And um, yeah, so you can't drink Jager bombs. And what I was going to go into now is I want to give anyone who's out there who's at uni the perfect or maybe just going on a night out not just uni going on a night out with friends i want to give you the perfect line of drinks to have in in the order that you should have it so and this is budget drinking you're growing up you haven't got like champagne bottles on the go okay so you get one of those in the corner shops they do like big two liter bottles of cider okay so you get one of those, and that'll be like, what, £2.50? Not even that, maybe cheaper. You don't want to go too cheap. Scrumpy Jack's is quite nice. If you go really cheap, you're going to be regretting it. So you just go like mid-level to the expensive range. Then you get Blackcurrant, which you've probably got at home anyway. Um, and that's it. That's all you get to start with from the corner shop. 
then you go to the pre-drink location, which of course there is because you've got friends and you're going to have a great time and you're all playing cards and things like that. And that's when you start to drink the cider. You mix in the black currant with it, pour a tiny bit of cider out or just drink it straight and then put the black currant in afterwards, swirl it around, and that's a great drink. Perfect, because if you have to down anything, you can pour a pint glass of that down you and it's like drinking Ribena. Even the fizz isn't that bad. Mm. Um, I've actually laid on the floor before and had it poured into me and drank like as quick as possible and it, it works. So that is definitely a good drink. It's a nice anyway, safe drink to start with. Exactly, layer in the stomach. So on to the next location. Um, once you arrive, you get... A Bacardi Breezer or a WKD, whatever the girliest drink is you can find in a bottle. Not that drinks are girly, but if they were, that's what you'd choose. Um, you get a straw from the bar. You get a shot of tequila. And then you get another cider, which is, um, or a beer if you're a beer person. You could just do it, get a beer now that you're at the place. But I personally get a cider. Um, and I'll get a cider black again, just so that my body's like, yeah, you've had this already. So you get there, you've got your drinks, no one's really in the bar yet, like it's early in the evening, people are starting to round up, but this is where people, like the cool kids will come later, but we're here first because we want to get the cheap drinks, whatever. So then you go back to your friends and you put the straw inside of the straw pedo, and it's called a straw pedo for a reason, because once the straw is in, you hold your thumb over the top bit of the straw so that no air can escape. And then you pull the bottle down to you and you can drink it like the gas in the bottle doesn't come into the equation whilst you're drinking. Wait, what what are you what are you talking about? You'd have to maybe you have to watch a YouTube video to understand what I'm talking about. But it's basically a you know those Bacardi Breezer bottles or WKD, like the cheap drinks. The big bottle the big bottles or just like the small nah, singles. They're small ones, small like ones. Like a J two O size, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you were to drink that, you'd be going like, yeah, glugging it. Yeah, 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 because of that. But as soon as you put a straw in, for some reason, I don't know what, you put your thumb around the straw to stop anything coming out, and then you put the whole bottle in your mouth, and it just pours out. Uh, oh, yeah? right, 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 right. You're giving it some air. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slam the bottle down to the table when you're done. Straight onto the tequila. Vroom, gone. Have a little sip of your cider, and that's it. Chat to your friends for the next hour. You just have your cider, nurse your cider, chat to your friends, have a great evening. Later on, you're going to move to the dance floor. As soon as you get to the dance floor, four Jaeger bombs. There's probably a deal going on. If there isn't, you're in the wrong place. If there's a deal for three, you can get three and one extra, but four Jaeger bombs, okay? Drink the first two, because you've obviously finished your cider at this point. Drink the first two, so you down them at the bar. Take the other two Jaeger bombs to the dance floor, sipping your Jaeger bombs. After Sipping that, on Jaeger bombs. After that, yeah, you've got to get the right Jaeger bombs. Like, not someone who's just putting a tiny bit of Red Bull in. Like, you've got to have a decent amount. After that, you, like, they don't let you take drugs into clubs. But the fact that you can get a Red Bull and Jaeger is just as good because you will be <laughs> off your nut. Like, and that's the best thing is that I'm quite an excitable person. So when I get to a bar... Like, I'll spend myself in the first 40 minutes on the dance floor just like, oh, yeah, just like busting my moves, like really loving it, really loving it. Yeah. Half an hour later, I'm like, oh, geez, <laughs> where's the sofa? And then I'll just lounge on the sofa for the rest of the evening. Like, it just, it does me. But if I've got my Jaeger bombs, I'm good to go. And then you just chase away the night with a few Jaeger bombs, change it up every so often, get a few shots if you get offered them. You'll be good to go. If only we were that young. Oh, God, yeah. It's a swift memory of mine, that one. Um, but now I just go to the corner shop and get a... Uh, every so often I'll get this cider that I've got here, a Copperberg. They are they, good, the Copperbergs. Is it mi mixed fruit one, yeah? Yeah, well, I was thinking that um, I drove to the post office earlier and oh, yeah. there was a pub with a sign outside the front. We're opening next week. And I was like, oh, whoa, yeah. pubs are back. Yeah, it's going to be so, good. Outside only though, but it is getting warmer. Today was lovely today. This is a Monday, by the way. Monday it is the twenty second. Really. That's yeah. gonna be interesting. How many pubs are gonna be like clamoring to extend their reach like they have like they have been, seats man. all the way up the road. Yeah, they right. have. Yeah, so um what from what I've seen, some of the local pubs around here, uh so the Green Man in 
um, engrave. Yeah. They've the whole car park. No, no, no. So they've well, they had they had that beer garden anyway, but they've they've obviously fleshed out as many tables as they can. But yeah. they've also moved to move the bar outside as well. So they've oh, got really? they got taps outside, fridges outside, Sick. wine racks, glass Maybe we racks. find a whole new level to bu- to what to what a pub should be. Yeah. Maybe yeah, it's a gonna pub be isn't fun. it? It's gonna be and sick. it's going to be just in time for summer. Yeah, it's going to be sick. Dude, is it like I was genuinely thinking earlier. I was like as soon as things open up, I don't, I, like coronavirus is is gone in my opinion. I'm I'm going to be precautious where I can. I'm not going to be breathing on people, but I'm not going to be sitting there thinking, oh, I can't do, oh, should I, should yeah, I not yeah, do that? Yeah. I'm just going to fucking go for it. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it's, uh, and I want to go to the pub and I want to have a drink and like, I just want to feel freaking normal again, especially if I'm going to leave this area. Like, I want to see people first. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, true. Yeah, so, that's so true. The recovery phase. So I've got a, uh, just to wrap up the drink situation. You've got a copper burger. I didn't even throughout cider. all of that. I didn't even ask you what drink you have. That's how self-centered I am. That's right. Um, <laughs> I've got a Japanese whiskey. Tenjaku. Ah, uh, is it the one? Well, I was about to say, is it the one with Japanese writing on it? I think I know the bottle though. It's like got a. Uh, it's got, I was about to say it's got a nice smooth paper label on the outside. It does that's, have a nice. The it does. <laughs> yeah, it comes in a bottle as well. I know the one though. I think um, it's a white, think... white label with like Japanese two Japanese symbols, yeah. probably spelling out the word tenjaku. I think um, they um, 40%. the Japanese ones are more rice based whiskey. I am not sure. It's very nice. <laughs> How did you come by that as well? Have you got gin and whiskey from your dad? Or no? Nah, so um, just getting boozed all over the place. Well, that's what I asked for my birthday. Like my parents were like, "What do you want for your birthday?" And I was, and I've you know when you get to the age of what well, the our age like what do you ask for um so i just said like just get some just get some alcohol i've been drinking whiskey mm. like some you know like a couple of bottles of whiskey would be nice so mum got me um a japanese whiskey and uh just some random scottish single malt whiskey both look very the bottles look very nice on both of them yeah um and dad got me a gin yeah uh off of a recommendation from my cousin who was round on the weekend on my birthday I'll find out, um, doing my, uh, the pastoring. my manager fred he is a massive gin man so is i'll find out what he reckons is best and then you can try that one as well so if you talk to him about it i've got monkey 47 Monkey a, 47. It's Dude, a, I actually think... It's a German. That, yeah, but I know that name. I know that name, so I think that's probably what he wants. Because I've been out drinking with him a few times, and I know that name. It's a good It's a good gin, man. It's, it's really yeah. nice. Uh, something about drinking, isn't there? Especially when you're with friends. Like, And I feel like that's probably the only thing that I actually have missed through lockdown. And I don't even do that often, but it's just the fact that I can't do it. Yeah, you always miss the things you can't have. Yeah. So uh, you found something in your loft, you told me. Yeah, so... I don't um, know what it is. I'll provide some context as to the reason why I was in the loft. So, and it's totally irrelevant to what I found in the loft. Um, loft for those people... It's a people, place to be, the loft, isn't it? It is, uh, and I think a lot of people... like. I think it's only really the English that use the term loft. Um, but it's attic. an attic. Yeah, attic, yeah, there you in, go. In the attic. Um. So Liza does crocheting. Um, she's really good at it now, and I've set up a website for her to to start listing some products to sell. Is that like making things out of material? Uh, it's like knitting, but without without the knitting. Like it's just one needle. Okay, it's yeah, not yeah, a needle; yeah. it's just a hook. Um, she's really good at it now. Um. She's still learning. She's not, she's not, you know, she's not creating her own patterns, but she can follow a complex YouTube video and create like a, so last thing she made was like this crazy, um, double crochet cluster bag. And it's huge. It's like the size of your screen. Mm. Um, that's a 32 inch monitor. I think it's 32, maybe 30. Anyway. Um, so I thought, 
I would like start crocheting because it's quite difficult. Uh, you know, when she when she's crocheting, she she um, concentrating quite hard because you have to count. It's quite like quite quite a. It's relaxing to do, but it's quite uh, taxing on on the on the brain, and you can't really multitask while doing it. So often, it's the case that I ask her a question, and I, it's just like silence until she's like, "Huh, what did you say?" Um, so I thought we would join in together in the silence. So I would. I mean, I can do other things while she's doing that for sure, but I thought it'd be nice to get a crochet set. Anyway, I got a crochet set. I didn't buy any yarn or wool um to do it with but i felt sure that there would be some in in the house because when i was like maybe 10 i used to do knitting as you do yeah so i thought there must be some yarn somewhere i'm Mm. not and it's it's so expensive yarn like it's unbelievably it's like a pound for like a, a 50 gram ball of wool and like you could probably make two bucket hats out of it no, you know, you can make one bucket hat out of it. Like a pound for a bucket hat. And I have to put in all that hours of work. No, thanks. So I'm trying to find a wholesaler for like yarn and just get like a big drum of it. Mm. Anyway, so I went up in the loft to try and find some yarn. And I found so much stuff up there. Um, it's great, isn't it? The stuff you accumulate is yeah. just like dormant, so, unrequired, but still required. So I found a PS2 Slim. That's not the thing that I want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, silver one yeah. with loads of games, like unbelievable amount of games on there. Games Almost that... think those games are better than these games. Yeah. And then what I found in a box that was a Sony and one of those old Sony uh, like speaker docks. And it was so old that it was promoting like the first iPhone compatibility on it and the first iPod touch compatibility. Mm. Um, and in that box wasn't the speaker set, but it was my Nintendo DS. And plugged into the Nintendo DS was my Pokemon Ruby um, cartridge. And I, I was like, this is... Like this is all of my all of my dreams have come true here. I've gone into the loft to find some wool, and I've walked out with my Nintendo DS that I didn't even know I had anymore. Um, anyway, so I booted up the Nintendo DS. It still works. Like it's been in the loft. It's been in the loft for probably ten years. It still works. And you know what? This is a message to all developers out there today. It boots that like the time to get to the screen to click play is. Like, you get the splash screen, which is like, with the little theme tune of Nintendo, and then you're in. Like, then you can press play, like, and you're I playing st- the game. I still don't know what my Xbox is doing these days when I turn it on. Mm. Sometimes it's just having a funny one. No reason why. But yeah, continue. So I booted up this Ruby game. I've got a level 100 Machamp. I've got the Groudon. The Groudon is the... Um, the so you know, I don't know if you ever played Pokemon on on the Game Boy. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, not on the Nintendo DS though. DS was like after my age group, I think. Like uh, we well, had all the colors and stuff like that. So the so Pokemon Ruby was for the Game Boy Advance, which was the mm. one after Game Boy Color. Right. Um, but the <laughs> Nintendo DS, the first version of Nintendo DS, supported Game Boy Advance cartridges. Yeah. Um, I had a, I had an intent. No, I had it. One of the colours, but it was like plastic that was see through, so you could see into the middle. Oh yeah. Oh, well, that was cool. My brother had a Game Boy Color, the yellow version that was being promoted with Pokemon Yellow, which was the yeah. first Pokemon. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Groudon. If I don't know if you know about the Pokemon series, but basically all the Pokemon cartridges, they're like. The front cover is like a, I like the, the most rarest Pokemon that you'd find. And each cartridge has their own rare Pokemon that's within the game. And Groudon is the Ruby rare one. And I've got it. So I, I was like, I, I must have completed this game. 
I, I remember spending so long playing Pokemon on that Nintendo DS and the Game Boy Advance. It's unbelievable. And the brilliant thing about it, well, about finding the Nintendo DS, is in that box was loads of games, and particularly one from the Game Boy Color series, which was Pokemon Red. Um, not only do I have the box for Pokemon Red, I've got two cartridges of Pokemon Red. And like, I don't know, but I feel like they must be worth some money. I didn't find any Pokemon cards, though. I distinctly remember now that we, we me and my brother had a load of Pokemon cards, like hundreds. Um, but I think they all got stuck together. I think maybe one of us spilt apple juice on them or something. And they all got stuck together. And then when you started peeling them off, like, it just peeled off... <laughs> just peeled off the pokemon <laughs> so it's just like worthless I'm, I'm seeing pokemon red on ebay for anywhere between 30 to 100 no way yeah with Good condition with, one with, with or with without the box. box with the box is uh well it's hard to tell because a lot of them are bid only but buy it now with the box of 77 quid jesus or uh, sitting on some money there box with manual 150 quid this one i don't think i've got the manual I have to, this is a good point, like because I feel like I've been done by it because I know my mum's just moved out, so I know that my my attic's going to be completely nothing left up there. Like, yeah, but um, there must have been some Pokemon cards somewhere. I remember that. It's weird though because I remember you messaging me saying I found something in the loft, and I said, "Was it some Pokemon cards?" But yeah, it wasn't Pokemon cards, but it was Pokemon games. related. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Anyway, so. Uh... I'm probably going to take... I can't even remember what the cable is to connect a PlayStation 2 to a screen. Um, it's, it's definitely not HDMI. So I'll have to fish that out, bring it down here and maybe play some PS2 in, in my um, in my shed. See, I, There's loads of games. There's so many games for it. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah. Anyway, Those were the days. that's the story. I've been watching... Uh... The Crown, which I know I told you about, but uh, obviously we've got listeners now, so uh, I thought I, I wanted to share it with them, which is a Netflix series which is about the monarchy in the UK. Mm -hmm. And it's thrown up all these different sort of questions for me because it's kind of like thrown me into the shoes of what it would be like to be one. Yeah. And I've always had this sort of attitude of... Uh, Similar fuck the monarchy. To, yeah, fuck the monarchy, fuck government, fuck rich people, fuck anything that's better than me that I don't have. Yeah. Um, that's just the stance I have in life. But it's kind of made me question a little bit because <clears throat> the weird thing about monarchy is is that you're a kid and you're born in it. Yeah, yeah, you've got no choice, yeah. Yeah, and like... I get there's a lot of politics once they're all older and stuff like that, but I was looking at the little kids running around and I was just like, dude, that's like... They're clueless. They don't know what they're... Their they're lives in. are so different. Yeah. Like, the yeah. parenting is useless. Like, you have no connection to anyone. It's all... Like, imagine living in Buckingham Palace. Like, everyone's like, oh, that must be amazing. That looks like a prison, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a flat piece of ground with a palace on it. And then, what? When you're a kid, where, where am I playing? What am I doing? Like, yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, you've got everything you ever want, but still, it's like, it's no, you don't want to live there. And I, I know they have Windsor Cars and all this stuff, but still, you don't want to live in the spotlight like that. And um, it just made me really, really question it. Um, so I've been watching that. And uh, it also made me wonder a little bit about how. I don't really see a future where the monarchy makes sense and I think it's just going to become less and less relevant um, as time goes by. Um, yeah. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't really match. It doesn't, but at the same time, it's almost worth keeping just for the sake of it. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like it, it'd be a bit of a shame, wouldn't it? To like, like America don't have a like very few countries have a monarchy, and it yeah. feels like it'll be a shame to sort of 
give but, all the not and i mean not that the, not that the monarchy has any power but it's just like you know there's this like mythical being that like talks to the prime minister when they get elected and he's like you don't know what those discussions are and then you've got all the anniversaries that that happen which means all the holidays that we get as citizens there's there are some benefits to having a monarchy um, holidays <laughs> it just costs a lot of money it just costs a shitload of money and yeah. i under my understanding is is that the crown it is it, i think it's illegal not illegal but it yeah i think it's basically illegal for the crown to earn to have an income less than it's than the previous year <laughs> <laughs> that's a brilliant one isn't it what rules should we make that's like genie in the bottle stuff yeah yeah, yeah exactly what should we do yeah. today <laughs> <laughs> can't make my dick bigger uh shall we make more money than yeah that sounds great let's yeah. do that one mm. God. i don't know how they think of these things and and obviously like if you don't have a monarchy like what does buckingham palace mean what does like what do all these places mean um, but that's the beauty of it is that it actually is nothing. It isn't. It's just the value that we impose on it, just like money, and it, none of it makes sense. It doesn't make sense, but it's nice. Like it's nice that like is it? Well, the the crown. She pay- looks like like I. I'm gonna go and say it. Like I. For what they could be, they are failing so hard in terms of connection and actual relevance to the people that I guess we could say they serve because we don't serve them. You know, that that facade that's being put on could do so much better. And like, I... I just think you regret it. I think... You, I but think... then the second you change it and you ask for more, like what? I'll, I want the Queen to come to my house and like get on my level. Like maybe if she does, <laughs> if she does that, then... She will no longer be on the level that she is. So I get that the facade has to kind of be protected in a way. But that was my point is that in the future, I don't really understand what that, like how that works and and what people will think of it. But it's interesting because from watching The Crown, I have learned that in... There is a level of empathy provided from through The Crown that you, that is given to you. I, I, that's what I felt when I watched the first two episodes. You well, do yeah, feel... but that's back then. It, things have changed. Um, yeah. But... Also, there isn't really. I just don't see a place for them in the future. Like I can't, I can't imagine it working. And and what used to happen is like after the war, like the facade was working really well before the war, and then after the war, the people were like, "Well, we just went and did all this. We've been through all this, and now you're still up there, and." She would have, instead of saying, so there's an important scene in it, right, where she gets written a script where she says the representation of every country is made up by its average men and women. And one of the people said, instead of saying average, you should say working class. Hmm. Um, But she didn't read the script and she said average. And I feel like that it, it caused this massive uproar because of everything had changed and it wasn't relevant with the time. And this person suggests some stuff to them and they change and they adapt. And like mm-hmm. in history, it shows the change that the crown had in response to what was going on in yeah. modern times. And that's what I'm asking is like, what is the future state of monarchy? Because, you know, I can't see the queen doing a TikTok, but then if the queen was to pass away and someone younger take it on, maybe they would. But would so, you want that? Is it still the monarchy? Not really. So it does. I just don't really get it. So I think you have to look to places like, um, like Dubai. They have a monarchy, um, and the ruler of Dubai <clears throat> is uh, some would like you know is deeply invested in his culture and it means that from the western perspective it can be it can look like a bit of an arsehole and he is a bit of an arsehole <clears throat> but he does good for his people um but his son he's a fucking dog like he's a he's a he's a g like yeah. when he gets into power 
it's going to be the best time ever. Like everyone's going to love him. Everyone already does love him. Hmm. Um, and maybe that's just because he's a prince. Uh, prince, you know, like prince get a bit of free reign, don't they? And princesses get a bit of free reign in being a bit more themselves with the people. And they kind of, I guess, that's the institution saying that, oh yeah, you just go ahead and like be yourself, like Princess Anne, whatever. Um, Princess Diana, sorry. Um, but I, the, the, I do agree with you that, like, you know, times are changing so fast that they, that it's impossible for them to keep up because of, it's, it's worse than the level that they have to adapt to, the speed at which they have to adapt to the world is, ha, has to be, like, is definitely hard for, for the institution to adapt that fast. It's, it's just, it's even harder for them to adapt than it is for a large conglomerate corporate business to adapt to the modern times. Like, you, you know, you look at some of these oldish corporates, um, it, like even if you're looking like real estate, right, like countrywide, for example, they they can't adapt. Like they're just too big of an organism to adapt quickly enough to the times, which is why they're getting ruined by people like Purple Bricks and other, um, and Keller Williams and stuff like that who can adapt that fast because they're smaller. So it's so difficult for the monarch and that institution to adapt fast enough that you're right. There will come a time where the people just go like, do we really need this anymore? Um, but I, I really worry about, and I'm not saying that our culture is a good culture. I'm just saying you would lose a lot that you, that you don't think about. So, like, I remember going on days out with my family just to go to Buckingham Palace and, and watch the changing of the guard. Yeah. And it's like this, you know, so a strange man in a red suit and a big hat on. That won't exist anymore. And you won't see mm. them change. Like, you won't see that. that um, yeah. That, that it's rhythm. cancel culture here, isn't it? But it's interesting you say that because even, even as you're saying that, I'm thinking, like, when I always say the walls are closing in, it's like, well, you know, you, you, eventually life becomes a bit vanilla without these oddities. Yeah. And they're it's, the things that give it flavor. And I remember as a kid going up to see Buckingham Palace and all that stuff. And, and like, it was amazing. Like, yeah. it was amazing just looking at this place. Like, it, it looked so grand that it could have been mm. laced with gold. Like, that's how good... Buckingham Palace looks even today. It still looks I think that it's good. It's about to be with the renovations, isn't it? Yeah, um, <laughs> the gardens that it provides, like um, what's that garden right next to uh, Buckingham Palace? What's it St. called? St James's Park. St James's Park. Like, yeah. although you know, most of that's, I don't know if it's funded by the Crown. It could be, um, but you know. Y St. James's Park won't mean so much without Buckingham Palace right next door, in my opinion. No, I agree. Um, I so. all, all of these, you know, the manor houses that exist in the UK, they'll just end up being bought up. Like if the crown doesn't exist, they'll just end up being bought up and turned into flats, turned into council flats and ruined. Not that council flats so get ruined, they, oh, but they do get ruined. But, you know... I I am I don't love the crown or the monarchy, mm. but it does have some perks. Yeah, God and I wouldn't want to lose those. Plus, God it brings in queen. a lot of tourism money as well. Tourism, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. They're all there for Queenie. Mm -hmm. And the um, com and the Commonwealth as well. So, like um, Australia, still has. Uh, the Queen's face on their um, money. So does Canada. Yeah, I always think that's interesting. All these other countries that we own. We don't own them. It's just part of the Commonwealth. Like they. So basically, 
I, now, I'm, yeah, I'm, now I'm we sure the now crown is a, a lot better, isn't it? Now, doesn't the crown the um, the series go through like the the um, devolvement it, of the it, well, yeah, I don't know how far along I am yet. Oh, but okay. I've, I've been on the tour, like so they've gone to the different places and everything like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's actually quite a nice thing in some ways, like. But I guess you only get to see it's the good bit, side of it. It's a There's bit some weird, bad though, isn't it? it? Like it's a bit weird when you see, um, when you see uh, old Lizzie and um, what's his name going to uh, like Namibia or wherever, wherever it is. Yeah, and it's just like they shouldn't be there. Like, like we've just taken that land and said it's ours, and it's just white people driving around in cars. And there's black people there, just like what the Not fuck? Not cars, are these? mate. Spaceships. Yeah, basically, yeah. And the, the, <laughs> the natives are just like, what the fuck has happened here? Yeah. Um. But I guess that's the beauty of how. Which is why I think they devolved it. I think it was basically that tour, that tour that they did where um, George died. I think that tour basically made Elizabeth go. This is. Like we shouldn't really do this anymore. Mm. <laughs> let's let's devolve the the um, Commonwealth, and then the Commonwealth just became something optional. Like if you wanted to stay part of it, like you know, there's not no benefits to being in it other other than the Commonwealth Games. I was like, about to say that you could yeah. be part of the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, the fake Olympics. There you go. And you can have you can opt to have the Queen's face on your on your bills, but that's about it. Um, it would yeah. be nice, in my opinion, if like I would really love to see like the Commonwealth become a thing. Like now that we're out of Europe, yeah, true. We need to do something. Hurry up, because yeah. we're getting irrelevant. Let's get the Commonwealth back. Come on, guys. So I'm I'm part of a mail list called C N or is it C A N Z U K? Like Cans, Cans UK. It's like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, UK, and it's like um. Oh, let's do it. Yeah, it's like a. We would all be great at cricket. Canadians can do hockey. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's basically like a, a lobby group to try and get, tr- like you know you know how difficult it is to try and get an idea across in a company. These no. guys are trying to get an idea across like four countries, governments, and trying to like get. Come on, let's. Like, we should probably work together. Um, so true. Yeah, I mean, like, we're all native English speakers. We I all share think... very similar values. Yeah, Brexit would almost make sense then. Yeah, have our own little special group. And like, why not extend power. that to the ex empire, ex um, English empire countries? Just like, look, Russia have done it right. Like Brazil is part of Russia's um, world treaty. Uh, agreements uh, they have a few other places russia have a few other places that um like it's like nato but not really Na- like russia's version of nato anyway i've started seeing something online which is um so if you follow controversial topics on twitter so say a riot happens or uh, something's going on whatever even the other day, a, a story broke about how Prince William isn't a racist. And then everyone was like, uh, we never said you are, but now you've done this PR stunt to show that you're not makes us think you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which was great because like, that was really weird. That, um, But the weird thing that I don't understand is that when I go on Twitter and I look at controversial topics, I see all of these antagonistic comments and I look at their account and they've done very few tweets and the account's been made like three months ago. For that purpose. And I just like, I just think I'm just seeing a shed load of bots on almost every topic. That's that why. Specifically. I... And, and this is it. I think every country is trying to manipulate each other's population via social media. Yeah. And there's just it's so very much. very easy. It's very easy to do it. Yeah, there's so much going on. And it's almost like I look at the comment and I think, someone couldn't really think like that. I really hope they can't. Like, that just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I know. Like, and and that's 
I'm kind of like seeing through it almost the attempt to antagonize me. But I did want to ask you one thing, which is, um, so there were riots in Bristol yesterday about kill the bill, kill the bill, which is a law in the UK, which has like loads of different rulings for policing and stuff. Yeah. Um, and there were loads of people saying like that, like the videos of violent protests and violent rioters. They were like, oh, we wouldn't act like that. It's obviously Antifa, and. I just want someone in the world to explain to me what Antifa is because I see it in almost every news thing now and I don't understand what it is. I don't know what it is. Can we just Google this quickly? Can can we figure can we learn this together with the rest of the uh, the world listening to the podcast? What the fuck is Antifa? What is Antifa? I think it's like a group of people. It's who a are... left wing anti fascist, anti racist political movement in the United States. It's highly decentralized and comprised of, of comprises an array of autonomous groups that aim to achieve their objectives through the use of both non-violent and violent do- action rather than through policy reform. <laughs> <laughs> so just anarchy. Yeah, 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 just anarchists basically. <laughs> so so the right side is like um like oh well, here here's we the thing. I'm thinking like bald people who go to the football and get angry and drink beer and shout about how the UK should be great and we should get rid of people who aren't white and all this weird things. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. like the really far right side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Antifa is trying to be the really far left. Or is it just left wing? So what do they want? They want freedom and they want it now. And they'll, <laughs> they won't stop at any means to achieve that. It basically, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, my problem is with this kill the bill thing is it 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 sounds very um what's the book 1984 yeah oh do you want to know what and before you say do you know what hold on to that thought yeah and i'd just like to run through this idea with you Okay. And you've probably had the same idea as well, based on. I this... think my mum's had the same idea, but yeah. Okay. Um, so we need to start with the language of the protest, which is "kill the bill." Now, I, I'd, I'd like to think that if it's somebody from the left wing that started this, they would not use that term. They would not use those terms together. They would think about that idea. They would go, yeah. what, what can we call this protest? And someone would say, kill the bill. And they'd be like, no, definitely not. Like, definitely not that. Like, it sound, for people who don't live in the UK, the bill could be known as the police. Yeah. So kill the police, it would essentially sound like. Yeah. But, but the bill is actually the piece of legislation or law, like yeah. the, the document, I don't even know, whatever it is. Um. So that's Americanism coming into it, which is why maybe people are thinking it's like Antifa, because it's you know that's a U.S. state, um, United States group, based group, um, and Bill is not a term that we would use in the U.K. to describe a piece of legislation. Um, neither is amendment. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's the first red flag for me, which is. It, um, and that's, but this is what I was thinking as well when I was watching it. I felt like because there was there was a, a a police van stuck outside the police station, and it'd been left there. Yeah, and it, it was just it empty. Sounds, it, it sounds it sounds fucking staged to me. Like all of it sounds staged. It sounds what it sounds like is Pretty Patel has said to like you know said to one of their people like we need to sh- like you know the there's been a bit of a hum around this legislation. Um, we need to prove that it's like worthwhile so that we can get this power. Mm. Um, so let's stage this thing. Like have someone like, you know, just deal with it. And somebody's gone away and taken that. Someone like Dominic Cummings, for example. He like th- this is the kind of thing that he would have come up with. The yeah. this kill the bill protest. Because he's he's Dominic comes. He's an intelligent guy. Like he's very intelligent, but he's very. Um, he knows exactly how to um, manipulate. manipulate public, just like public yeah. thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is a 
this is a this is this has got Dominic Cummings written all over it. Um, so he's gone away and said, right, he's you know he's hired a strategy team. Let's get this done. We need to get this this bill passed so that I can get a load of money. Um, I'm going to pay you a hundred thousand pounds each to come up with this strategy and let's implement it. So they've staged themselves as this left wing group. They've named it Kill the Bill, which makes total sense because it's kill the bill as in like you know all the left wing people can get behind that ideology of yeah we don't want this fucking legislation and you know we're so exposed to american americanisms that like everyone knows the term bill um but little do they know that the implications of those three words is also as you say like kill the police mm. And all it takes is, you know, it it may have started off as a very um, civilised protest because that's exactly what the bill is saying, um, the legislation is saying. <clears throat> yeah. And then all Dominic comes and said is like he's hired a bunch of youths and said, right, you lot have been scrutinised by the police for so long, you get pulled up on the streets claiming that you've got drugs for no fucking reason. Like, it's time for you to make a stand and fucking, you know, like, I've gotten, I've heard that the police are like, they're not all the ticket at the moment. They're understaffed. Like, it's time for you to get your revenge. So you've got the peaceful protesters coming out, pro actually protesting. Then you've got this small group of people that want to incite violence onto the police because of kill the bill. This is a perfect story for the um, newspapers to get behind. Now, Kill the Bill is littered everywhere over the newspapers. And all people can think of is they see this police van on fire is Kill the Police. Yeah. This is going to be perfect for Pretty Patel to say, we have to implement this legislation so that this stuff doesn't we happen. Protect our police officers. Exactly. It's fucking oh. bullshit, mate. It's like, this is 1984. That's it. Uh, my mum texts me that because uh, I said about the police thing. Because I, I, I kind of sometimes with my mum, when I talk about progressive ideas, I almost want to, I just want people around me to think about these things. And I know that no one ever thinks about these things maybe on the level that I do because I seem to be psychologically obsessed with trying to find justice in the world. Yeah. Um. And she said back, it feels like George Orwell, like 90. Thingy. Yeah, she said exactly that, and I was like saying that in the future you'll be walking down the road, facial recognition everywhere. It's not even the case that they'll need these bills. Like you can't do anything. No. You'll have yeah. police drones that can just look through your window. Yeah, and they'll, that'll be fine because a helicopter can fly past your house now and look through your window. Yeah, like, and that's fine. So, and, and I, I'm I'm pretty sure. They won't even need drones to see stuff. They'll probably be able to like look into a crystal ball and just see stuff at <laughs> one day. Like, yeah, they're, they're and, and that's the whole point of freaking law is to defend against that point. Yeah, because the walls are closing in. Um, I hope we don't need to give any context to this kill the bill thing. I mean, I guess, I guess we kind of have, but for those people that are outside of the UK, because we definitely have some listeners. Outside of the UK. Oh, we do. Most of them. Yeah, most the of them. UK audience is trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Come ba back. Basically, the the bill is that the legislation, I don't want to use the term bill, the legislation that they want to amend is the police, something policing, crime, and blah de blah de blah thing. Um and what they want to do is they want to give power to the Home Secretary. And the Home Secretary is like, if you imagine the, in your country, you may have like a Minister of Defence, which would basically run the military. And the military oh. runs over uh, overseas, like they operate overseas. Home Secretary is for internal affairs. So like policing, um, any home guards, uh, things like that. Homes like national security basically is the Home Secretary. So the, this legislation wants to give power to the Home Secretary 
to basically give final say whether a protest will happen or not happen. And what that means for protesters is if you're organising a protest, you must seek approval from law enforcement, i.e. the police and the Home Secretary, in order for that protest to go ahead. Otherwise, you'll be subject to, um, I think it's a minimum of a £1,000 fine, up to £10,000, or imprisonment, and or imprisonment. And, And to also give context, the current Home Secretary is like, the last person you'd ever want in charge of that power. Yeah, yeah. Is the most like opinionated, backward thinking, useless turd that I've ever seen. Yeah. And yeah. I've been deba- I've been debating even before this co- do you know all the all week all I've been thinking is I wonder if I can use the C word on the podcast at Pre Patel. Um, I, I think you probably can. Because she is a fucking cunt. Yeah, no, she is. <laughs> I want to say it. no. You've said it now. She's a cunt. <laughs> cunt, absolute. And and I like. I'll probably never say that word on this podcast again. And there's a level that that word has, which is great because swear words, they all kind of have the same level. There's crap, and then there's like a level above that, and then cunt sits at the top of the pyramid, and you never get to use it. Unless like you're writing, maybe. But, yeah, and and for those, but she's. At, do you know what? Maybe yeah. she was just born for that. Just just for that word. I but, feel like it. <laughs> and just for those um, feminists that are listening, we don't see the word as of cunt as the female genitalia. That is no, not it's not. How it's the top of the pyramid it. swear word. It's top of the pyramid yeah. swear word. It's nothing to if do was, with the female yeah, genitalia. Like because. That's your I'm, envisionment of the word. Now, our envisionment of the word is very different from yours, so you should change the way that you think about the word to how we think about the word so that you feel less offended by that word because we are not being offensive because our definition of the meaning is very different from yours, so you should adapt to the way we think, otherwise we'll end up putting legislation in to put you in prison. Yeah, but also, <laughs> I love the female genitalia. Yeah, it's fucking great. Like... <laughs> The best person in the world. I'd have to call them a cunt. <laughs> I would. <laughs> so um, I've, never, I've never understood that. But anyway, anyway. Um, just for context, just if you don't live in this country or if you don't know who Pretty Patel is, don't even... She's a right cunt. No, no, don't even... You don't even need to do research in the sense of, like, finding out about what she's just done. Just the name. No, just, like, just go on Google and type in... And just look at a few pictures of what, the way she talks, like, just everything, everything. It's just horrendous. And yeah. she's the sort of person is like... person's, like, in a pool dying. And she'll, like, look at them and be like... That is your rightful place. Like, <laughs> she wouldn't even help. She's got. She's like holding a ring. She's holding armbands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, yeah. All right, I'm going. Yeah. She'd walk she's a, away. She's an arsehole. She's an absolute arsehole. And do you know what the funniest thing was? Is Theresa May said in the Houses of Parliament, she said, I'm interested about this bill because um, even though I can understand why we're at this point, a lot of the laws in it seem quite... Um, quite Power hungry. Yeah, and even though the Home Secretary at the moment is a lovely person, we don't always have the guarantee that will be the case. Yeah, yeah, Which is yeah. almost a satirical statement. Yeah, yeah, and, brilliant. And the whole of Twitter was like, as if Theresa May is the only person we could believe in anymore. Right. The tables have completely turned. Well, she used to be the Home Secretary, um, <sighs> and she was a pretty ruthless Home Secretary as well, but not in the same way that Priti Patel is, but um, in other ways. Um, but now she's, like, talking... Now that she's out of the, like... the the limelight she's actually quite you look at her and you think like why did we even get re- like all of a sudden you're talking sense bring, like, bring her back bring yeah. her back yeah what, it was all she just on? got flustered about it all didn't yeah. she she was fighting such a war that she had to have her back up and get aggressive i'd almost like she's like a soft cat you'd like to stroke yeah yeah I would, I would vote for, if Theresa May. Theresa. <laughs> if Theresa May would the come. Whole, the, the whole of the V Festival screaming for it. <laughs> Theresa May, come back, please. If if she presented herself for the Conservative leadership, um, I would join somehow, jo- convince 
the Conservative Party that I should be somebody that joins Conservative Party. Um, and it's not like the Labour Party where anyone can join. You have to have like VIP like permission to get invited to be a sponsor of the Conservative Party. I would try and get that vote her in, and I would definitely allocate my vote that is usually Labour or anything that's not Conservative. Obviously, the country is Conservative now for for the rest of its life, basically until the Conservatives destroy themselves, which. That's the first rule of the Conservative Party is don't destroy it. Like don't don't do anything to destroy us. Because that's that's the first rule that Labour don't have. Labour don't have this idea that okay, let's not destroy ourselves. They don't have that. If it and that's what they're going through at the moment is Keir Stammer has come in, he's absolutely destroyed the buildings that Jeremy Corbyn has created yeah, 100 percent. now only, it's only nothing. for the attempt to build his own image though only yeah and he's and like the guy the who Labour came Party. after winston churchill like taking people to war just because he wanted to like come out of winston's like shadow which, yeah and he's totally fucked the labor party um and which means all that means is the conservatives are like the strongest party in the country like, that means no one's got now. anything we haven't got anything there's anymore. nothing left the country the so, country is conservative from now I get, on i guess my question then is is so if you if you don't seek approval and get approval and then that protest takes place, I guess it's deemed a riot. Yeah. So, yeah. and, and the, the funny thing is, is like, I'm actually really intrigued to see this work because I know people, well, I don't personally know people, but I can imagine people who protest a lot and who like cause riots and things like that. I don't think they're the sort of people who are like, let me go online and just, uh, let me just, oh dear, you know, write her an email and say, yeah, can, yeah. can we write it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they're like that. No. And what, what, you're going to stop people gathering and, and protest? Like, you're just not going to be able to do it. Like, how can they stop? How can they stop you protesting? Imagine. They can't stop you protesting, but what they can do is if, like, the, the, it just gives them more laws to try and deal yeah, with it. The, so they, they can just... try and, like, fire weapons up and stuff like that. Basically, but as soon as that happens, it just gets worse and worse. And every time there's a, every time there's any sort of a protest, it will just turn into a riot. Yeah. Um... But that's even better for the government, I suppose. I guess riots, we're actually at a point now where the government has so much power where riots are actually a tool that they can use for their benefit. Well, that's what they've done in the last week. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's all fucked. It's completely fucked, mate. That's why I'm trying to get out of it as soon as possible. Anyway, yeah. a bit of just good... need to find a small little place with a bit of good news. Tropical just to turn the trees. tables. Yeah. Um. Getting good a job news. offer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and they seemed okay with me working from Southeast Asia. There you go. That's what you want. Which is good news. Take it in the, uh, put it in your pocket and run. Yeah, it's a nice little birthday present, late late birthday present. Yeah, that's good, man. That's um, good. I didn't seem very excited though when she, you know, um, um, she's uh, so the recruiter's an American. <laughs> I'm imagining and, her like you, you excited, like you seem it, like a little bit like what's wrong? Is there anything wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you're just like, nah, it's no, it's just, like, it's just, it's just who I am, mate. Yeah, like, it's just like it's, it's nothing yay, to learn. Yeah. Cheers, <laughs> cheers, mate. Going back to work after yeah. having like a fucking six Brilliant month time. hiatus, doing yeah. nothing. <laughs> Girl, don't expect much from me. No, nah, but it'll be good fun for sure. It'll be good fun. No, I think it will. I think it will. I think I've always struggled a bit with like with knowing you're not doing anything. I think it's just like a a bit of a waste. But then, not that work is the best way to fulfil or to give one's potential to the world. Um, but it's better to do something than nothing. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I can't see you loading up Call of Duty Four again. So I haven't loaded that up in a while. Actually, I can Im- I can imagine. I know that's what I'm saying. In a few months' time, you'll be spinning that disc. <laughs> So, can't be doing with that. Um, no, well done. Um, and Thank I guess you. I can segue that somewhat into my topic, which was I wanted to ask about um, what were the best life lessons you've learned since becoming an adult? And uh, just like any of these questions, you are allowed time to gather your mind. Mm. I will ramble on endlessly. I might need to fire some questions back. 
yeah, just to, just to get some clarifications of the no question. No terms and conditions attached. When see, I don't really know when I've considered myself like what age did I consider myself uh, so, an adult? Uh, so I think you became an adult when I started work. Nah, well, this is a good question. Yeah, I think you became an adult probably when you started eMove, I think. I think that was like the end of not being an adult, kind of. Yeah, I think it's so It's not too. that you were, just, you weren't just an adult, but you were like a I was young bumming adult. around doing like, nothing. Yeah, yeah. You'd, yeah. You, you slipped, you're on, you'd just come through the gates. Yeah. And what was the question again? What are the best life lessons you've learned? Or observations, I don't know. Things that you want to talk about from that experience, from now, now that you're 25, from back then. And am I, should I say these things as if I'm giving advice to new adults? No, not necessarily. Just okay. Do what you want. Just answer the question. Um, hmm. What was I like back then? What have I been through? See, the problem is with this question is I still don't really deem myself as an adult. I think other people would deem me as an well, adult. You can, uh, you do you know just, what? I've been thinking about just... this recently, and I'll just say this before, you've, before you say what um, Evie's going to say. There's, there's one thing that has really overtaken me in the last, well, basically this year, 2021, and a little bit before that, is... There's a lot of people around me that care about me. Mm. Um, and I don't, I don't care anymore about showing that affection back. And, and I'll try and explain that a bit. I, like, what I mean is, is I don't I care on about... I think one of our first podcasts we spoke about this a little bit. Or I tried to communicate how I feel about that. But yeah, go. So... Liza's sister's boyfriend. So my girlfriend has a sister and her boyfriend sent me uh, a happy birthday message on my Facebook page for this year. And I didn't expect that. Uh, he's also sent me a message personally. Um, there you go, mate. Let's chuck the ball right in your court. And he's a really nice guy. Like, honestly, Earl, his name is Earl, E-A-R-L. And if I had a boyfriend, if I was gay and, or if I was a girl. I love how you say girl instead of girl. If I was a girl. You always say that. If I was a girl. It's like hair girl. gel. <laughs> hair gel. I don't um, know where you got that from. Girl. girl. Yeah, go on. If you were a girl. I would... I would somehow choose him as my boyfriend because he's, he's absolutely amazing. Like he's, he, he's amazing. And if you're listening, Earl, you are amazing. Um, I'm not saying that you're not amazing, Tim. Look you at are he amazing. Just, he just said happy birthday. And then you said you want to date him. No, like, no, 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 no. I'm, he's, he's scored no, highly no. there. He's got his absolute no, return. No, 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 no. We, we, um, so sometimes like no, we we'll, no, no. we'll play game not we we'll, not me and him play games but like me Liza Liza's sister and Earl will be on like Discord or something um on like video chat playing a game um and you get to see the interaction that Earl has with uh, Liza's sister and you can see that he is amazing like he's he's he is an amazing boyfriend, and that's the kind of boyfriend that I would want if I was a girl. Um, said girl that time. Uh, so anyway, so he sent a me a guy. Facebook post saying happy birthday, and I I I, uh, I didn't care about what I posted back or how I reacted to it, so I reacted with a little um one of those uh love heart care emojis whatever it is you know with like the little heart little gay heart um it's like a hugging gay heart thing 
Like, yeah. and anyway, so the point of this, the whole point of this is, I no longer, and this, I guess, this is when I deem myself as becoming adult, is when I no longer care about how how other people think about me. Yeah. Um, that's one of the best things I've learned about being an adult. And I remember I think, my yeah, go on. I think there are more topics, but I think this is one that I really want to chime in on. Um, there'll be more lessons for us to cover, but um, so it's an interesting one: the relationships with people, because it's not that you don't care about that person. It's not that we don't care about the people we don't text back or. Um, you know, we don't put a level of effort into some things. I think it's almost that you can't. You can't live a life where you're being strung left, right, and center to reply to this web of of people around you because that wasn't what meaningful interaction was. When yeah. we were, you know, humans in the past, we didn't have all of these mediums of connection yeah. to the point where when you saw someone at a gathering – it was brilliant to see that person again. When you received a letter, it was brilliant to get a letter. Yeah. You know, when you went to go and see a family member, it was great. Um, but I can FaceTime you now. I can be in your life 24 seven if I want to be. Yeah. Um, and the beauty of a relationship is often found in the absence of time. And it's not necessarily found on, and it's not anything wrong with saying, happy birthday on Facebook. That's what people do. And I think everyone understands writing that comment and you only write it for the very best people in your life. You know, I'm yeah. not saying it for everyone. Um, and there are some of us that say it for everyone. There are some of us like me and you who say it for no one. And it doesn't mean that you're not in our thoughts. It doesn't mean that we don't care about you. Yeah. It's just a level of like some communication matters and some doesn't. And I don't think it's that you don't care about what people think of you i think you do care about that and i think the reason you care about it is because you're actually someone who cares about the people who are in your life a lot there's a lot of traits that you show that if if you are in woody's life then you show care towards them and you want to nurture that person and help that person whenever you can but you just do it in a way that is more meaningful than those little snippets of having to have a relationship that is upheld. It's like, it's, it's like love transcends Facebook walls, time, space, and effort. You, you don't have to prove your effort to love someone. You have to love them. Don't focus on yeah. proving something. Yeah. Focus on doing something. Yeah, um, I agree with that. And even if you don't do something, just be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, I 100% agree with that. And I struggle with it a lot of the time. I struggle replying to people. There are a lot of threats, especially since I became a dad. I remember on that podcast episode when you talked about what it was like to be a dad. Yeah. Like, there are so many people that, like, even the other day I made the, I made my Instagram, um, the Just Swim cast, yeah, instead of Timothy Jack. Yeah. And I thought to myself, like, oh, look at all these photos. Like, so many friends when I was at uni, all these friends at school, like, I miss these people. They meant a lot to me. And they did mean a lot to me, and they still do. And if I ever see them again, they'll mean a lot to me. But, like, the Timothy Jack Instagram account of a person who cared about the people around him and had this, you know, network of friends he would talk to, he's gone. Yeah. Not that guy anymore. And yeah. and that, you know, you say you don't feel like an adult, but that kind of is it. A lot of people talk about that, you know. You only need a couple of friends to make, like, think of your friends, everyone here who's, uh, sorry, think of your parents, everyone here who is, um, you know, who has parents. Think, when you were growing up, how many friends did they used to bring over their house every year? And were they the same people? There was probably four or five at most. No one had a network of friends like you do at school where there's, like, 70 people you could put in your top friends on Facebook. Like. Yeah. So uh, I think that's very... Uh, very astute. So I'll let you gather your thoughts to think of the next one. Because I think there are more than one, but I was going to say something that's quite similar, which is that some things are temporary and some things are forever. And that kind of leads into the exact same thing of what you've said, which is that there are a lot of people who I had brilliant times with at uni, who I was great friends with, even at school, 
Um, and you, you, a lot of the time you spend in life worrying about what people think. And realistically, there's very few things in your life that will remain a constant that you have to work on throughout life. And those are the things that kind of matter, in my opinion. Give me an example. Family. Yeah. And when I say forever, yeah, everyone dies. But I mean, like, in your whole life, they will be there for the duration, you know, as long as things go Even well. Even if they are dead, they'll still be like... Yeah, exactly. You know, they'll still be there, yeah. In your head um, and in photos and stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, I also, on the microscopic level, think it's interesting how... You're so wrapped up in the moment in life. Earlier, I was in my work emails and I wanted to find something that I remembered I had sent to the CEO of the company when I, f I was in my first few months at Funfair, mm -hmm. at my company that I work at. Um, and I was scrolling through all my emails and it was hilarious because I was looking at myself in the past and I'd completely forgotten about half of these things that had happened. Yeah. I'd completely forgotten about the roles I'd had in this company, the things that I had done, how I felt when I joined, like that first email to the CEO, like looking at my writing, remembering, like double reading it, like, yeah, yeah. am I saying something right here? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and I just saw my past self and I just saw the evolution of myself. And it's so easy I'm so critical of myself all of the time. Like I have a lot of traits that I don't like about myself. And I don't I, think self critical I, should be one of those traits that you dislike. No, nah, but th it's not one that I dislike, but I have a lot of traits that, of myself that I dislike. It's almost the cultivation of them that I actually like, Right. but the individual traits themselves frustrate me a lot. Um, and looking back at that, I kind of thought like, I was just happy for a moment. I was like, oh, little Tim, whizzing away. But I never think about that. Every day I sit there at work thinking like, oh, just trying to make a difference. Oh, stress, <laughs> like, you know. And I, why am I stressed? I'm working from home, doing fine. Like, I love my job. I love the company I work for. I've had some really bad jobs. This is definitely a good job. And then I looked back in the past and saw little Tim when he'd just come through the door. Um, wow, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, so I'll I'll um I've thought of another one, um, and I said this last week. But the thing, the thing that when I was when I was younger, I probably didn't appreciate him as much. But and it's this is the saying of um it's it it's the small things in life dot 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 um and it really is for me now now that I consider myself an adult. The, the small things in life, you know, the, the small little events or the small little wins that you get. Um, and sometimes even the smallest interactions, they they mean more now than they did back then. Um, so I, I'll try and give an example. Like... Um, I was a bit of a recluse at school, I suppose. People liked me, I think. Um, I didn't really like hanging around with other people, though. It's not that I didn't like hanging around with other people. It's just That was just my personality. I just didn't... I wasn't the person to go up to someone and say, you know, be the light of the party, like be the light it's, of the conversation. It's, it's, it's so interesting to think of the boy that I knew when you were that kid. Yeah. And... Because I wasn't someone who was super close to you at that time. All I had was that image, like judge a book by its cover, just like closed door, like, uh, okay, I'm not going to get much out of this kid back. Like he's not going to talk much, like whatever. Like, yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's, he's inside himself. And then to see all of the substance that you're capable of creating, it's like, it's like there's just this bottle with a lid on it. Like it just doesn't make sense to me. That yeah, the bottle was it's all like being. All, it's like all the time you're just sitting there with those thoughts in your head, just ah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like obviously it wasn't like that, you know. You're just a kid growing up. It's just really interesting that that could be the case. But yeah. yeah. Like... So I'll give an example of something that's the small things in life. I gave one example last week of um, park parking your car in a space with that has three empty slots, but. Here's here's a, here's another small thing that is something that 
that not not other people can give to you. So in the case of parking in a spot where there's three spaces, the world has sort of organized itself somehow to give you the win of, yeah, look, let's give Woody three parking spots today to like go right in the middle. Um, it's a magical thing. But this is something that you that I realized that I can give to other people that I didn't realize was possible. Oh, yeah, I, did, I guess I did realize it's possible. I just didn't put the effort in is just you know so um i messaged holly the other day saying congratulations on the house purchase um this was i think this was after the last podcast where i congratulated her and i like to think that that was a nice message unexpected message <gasps> You know, that threw back her memories into, yeah. oh, Woody and Tim being at E-Move. Oh, we had a really good time. And that then d- derived the response that she gave me, which was a really nice response. Yeah, so um, just hopping in quickly. Um, so I did the same when that happened. Oh, and yeah. I also had a nice response. Yeah. And, uh, and it kind of made me just think about what we're talking about right now, which is that there's an abundance of communication required from people. But if you step back and if you don't communicate to people, this brilliant thing happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden. People care about it, what you say. No, no, no. Not only that, but also you get this brilliant feeling that comes to you and it's from the back of your head, the 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 depths of space. Yeah. I should communicate to this person. What yeah, should I yeah. say? And you do it. and. And it feels great because it does. you wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah. And they enjoy it because there's unexpected. they know that you wanted to do it because yeah, yeah. you didn't, not, not necessarily that's unexpected, but just because they haven't heard from you. Like, it's just, uh, and I think that's so nice. And I think a lot of the times I'll do that. And like, after I send it, I'll be like, ah, oh, like I've let a fart out in a room yeah. or something. Like, <laughs> but then, but then once it lands and they come back and it's like, oh, that was really nice. Yeah, yeah. and like I'll just leave it there at that point. No yeah, need to go exactly. any further. Like exactly. that was a nice little bit in the world. But yeah, I sent the same message. And I think she's doing good. So, um, but she's yeah. probably she probably had hundreds of those messages and they probably meant all the same to her. But to me and you sending that message, that that's what I'm trying to say is, it's, um, the the feeling that you could have made someone feel good and that in turn makes yourself feel good about doing that nice thing for that person. That what I, That's for me is what makes me feel like that's not a good lesson, but a good something that I've come across as being an adult, which I think is will stay with me. I think we can get a new viewer if we just uh, link her this and say, we spoke about you at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Um yeah, so that's a life lesson. Um I don't even what was that life lesson? What the It's the simple it's the, the simple the small, things. The, s- the small, small and things. simple things. You know what? Touching on that, the small things, I think one thing is actually just realizing you're happy. Yeah. A lot of the time you have to laugh or be with friends or something like that to be happy. But sometimes in yourself, something can happen that just makes you happy. And you don't, if you don't think about it, you go the whole day thinking you weren't happy. Yeah. But if you actually, ah, what's this little, I've got a bit of a giggity giggity goo goo going on here. Yeah. <laughs> like earlier there was uh, I was on YouTube and Claudia was talking to me. I just started laughing because the video reje- suggested to me was rabbit farts and scares itself. <laughs> And uh, and I, I watched it, and it wasn't even that good. But but the caption just it, the it, idea it of just, it, made yeah, the you idea feel good. of it was great. <laughs> and I tell you what, that's something that's really come back to me recently. Is um, when uh, my stepdad came into our lives, he brought a lot of these old comedies to the table. Oh yeah, and um, we had watched them quite a lot, and it was great because like we'd been growing up in a Catholic Christian like violin playing life where yeah. pretty much the only exposure to crude things was what we got through our mates and stuff like that through the violin exactly yeah <laughs> playing a flat note <laughs> i actually remember i remember playing the violin and having to draw the curtains because all the kids outside were playing football and they decided to come up to the they used to come up to the window and watch me playing the violin and then they'd pretend they were playing the violin and i'd be sat there and i'd no. be like oh, gotta finish my grade five gotta do it <laughs> 
but uh, <laughs> Jesus, that was great. Um, but yeah, so I've been starting to watch comedy again, and I watched The Office. Um, which UK is, um, or American? Well, I used to watch the UK one. I always thought the US one would be awful, just because I think American people aren't very funny. No offense, I just like UK humor. Yeah, but I loved it. Wow, yeah, I think Austin they've taken inspiration that. from uh, the idea of kind of this flat humor that we have over here as well. Um, and it was so just what brilliant. Se- what season are you on? Uh, I, I finished it, mate. I, it was like the a whole, whole month of my life. And every oh, right. night, like you could ask Claudia, but I think I was happier in life. And that was because in the evening, I was laughing and I was releasing endorphins into my head. Yeah. And like I, I remember I'd be lying there in bed with Claudia, yeah, like curled up on my side with the laptop, like half on the bed, sort of holding it, watching it, watching a few episodes into like two in the morning. And she'd just get wound up because I'd just be lying there just like... <laughs> Like trying not to laugh, but like shaking the bed because my tummy's just laughing so much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's one thing that I, I'd say is a life lesson is to, that's what I was going back to is it's important to laugh. It's important to be happy. And um, I think there are some people that I meet, maybe it's just the impression that they give off, but I genuinely think there are people who are, who find it easier to be happy than I do. Um, I think there's also people who find it easier to be sad, but I think there's, I see a lot of happiness out there in the world, and yeah. like, well, I don't perceived there, happiness. Wherever perhaps, they are. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't throw myself out there into these activities that expose me to like, you know, I don't know, tremendous amount of happiness coming my way. Um, I'm a sort of slow burner. Like, I love my family. I love. Well, that was actually going to be things. my next thing that I was so, going to say. Yeah, go. Is um. Uh. I appre I when we're at this age uh, our generation our pa- our parents it, if we're lucky are maybe at an age of 50 mm-hmm. if we're lucky that and maybe 48 if we're even luckier 46 if you're super lucky um isn't that like what they had the kid when they were sixteen? To a twenty, yeah, something like that. Eighteen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Super lucky. Um. And I don't know about you, but it's getting to the point where I'm thinking, I don't know how much time I've got left with my dad and my mum. Um, no, I'm not saying they're not ill, Like they're perfectly, they're both perfectly healthy, but they're, they're past the stage of midlife, you know? Um, and it makes, and it means that, I mean, it's not that I even change much about how I interact with, with my parents. Um, but I get, I guess it does subconsciously in that if, if you get the chance to be not only a child to your parent, but at some level a best friend to your parent, that is when you like that's that's euphoria. Yeah. Um and I think I've reached that level with my dad. Yeah. I think you you got the the pinnacle dadship relationship going on, which I think is great. And I think yeah. for a, I think for a man, I, I think there's no better thing than that. I think it's interesting in comparison. Cause I obviously like my dad, my mum divorced and I don't speak to my dad and my dad is, um, a massive upset in my life. Like whenever anything happens, like even the other day. Yeah. So, um, I need to buy a car when I move out. Okay. Yeah. And, my dad had an obsession with vintage Mercedes. Okay. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And I used to work on them with him, and I have these memories. Like, I don't have very many memories of my dad, and um, I think that says something in itself. Mm. But the ones that I would do were normally doing things that he would enjoy, which is like working on his car. And I remember when my mum and dad divorced or, or separated. It was about eight or nine maybe. Um, not really understanding what happened. But there are a lot of things that happened that were car-related that have scarred me in a way. 
Mm. And uh, let me uh, let's uh, we spoke about some happy topics, so I guess I can take the mood a bit somber now. So I remember on the day when he left, he was explaining to me and my brother, and I remember us both sitting on the sofa holding teddies. And I remember me saying, I don't understand why you're leaving. We're a family. And I couldn't comprehend it. Yeah. My brother was older and kind of could. Um, so my mum's birthday was the next day and there were presents in the back of his car. And I remember him driving around the square outside and about to head up the road. It was dark. I ran outside in front of the car and I, he said, what, what's up, what's up, what's up, like, pulled down the window i remember seeing all this stuff crammed in the back of the car like all the stuff he was taking with him his possessions his music cds whatever yeah all the things that are more important than his family Mm. um and then i saw him i said um mum's presents are in the back and he's like oh i've put them in the garage um so he forgot to tell us that but yeah so me and my brother spent the whole night putting my presents together uh, for my mum and we stuck them all together rather than wrapping them individually. Mm. Gave them to her the next day. Uh, didn't make the birthday any better, no, regardless. Yeah, it was just a birthday of tears. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was car related because he was driving off in his nice Mercedes. Anyway, um, about three or four months later, I remember in the playground saying to my friend James Marigold, um, I think my dad's coming back and... Um, I don't really understand it, but I think he's picking me up from school with mum. And this is obviously mum and dad have tried to figure things out or something like that. Uh, So I was still really young at this time. It's like four months after it. And um, I remember him, his sister and me all held hands and prayed for... It's a really sad story, really, like three kids praying for two parents not to separate but Mm. anyway so we did some prayers and then that evening um we went home and the next day or so uh, i remember he gave me this toy car which was a little mercedes um and i thought oh that's a bit thank you like it's a toy car i can play with this this is great um but i didn't know that that toy car was what i'm about to talk about which was the next day we drove really far in the car and we didn't know where we were going. It was this big sort of surprise. And we got to this house and um, my mum stayed in the car. Oh, no, I think she went out with my dad. I don't know. But basically we were sat in this car and then this guy lifted up his garage and there was this... If you're out there, you can Google it. It's a Mercedes... I think we've been through i think you know what i think we've spoke about this in a previous podcast have i really I've, otherwise i'm having serious deja vu here i think i've spoke to you about it because i was thinking about it at the time anyway there's I'll no be, way you I'll would be quick to... then okay no 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 i do remember kind of speaking to you about this i i know when i spoke to this about you actually because i spoke to you about this once on discord and i remember hanging up and i was like god why did i suddenly start talking about a load of deep stuff Anyway, no, I don't. Re- I think it's pretty sure it, you wouldn't have opened up to me unless it was on a podcast. No, 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 no. I know that it wasn't. Okay. I know that it wasn't. Anyway, carry um, on. I wouldn't have gone into this on a podcast because I feel the way that I feel talking about it now. Yeah, because right. I would have talked to you about this, but this is something that I haven't really put out in the world. Um, so if I have said this twice, I'm sorry, but I'm having my moment. Yeah, it's going public now. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so lifts up the garage and there's this really, really nice vintage sports car. Um, And then basically what transpired is that he'd got back together with my mum and said he needed a fresh start and somehow a new car came into the equation. (laughs) Used my mum and his... Yeah, used my mum and his money. um, And then three weeks later, he was gone again and the car was gone with him. Um, So now I'm looking at all these cars and do you know what really winds me up? Fucking Mercedes badges. No, I really like Mercedes. Oh. <laughs> and I keep looking at them and looking at the prices no. of them. And I just keep thinking, every time I go out the front door, am I going to see that badge and instantly see my dad's face? And I am, so yeah, I can yeah. no longer have a Mercedes. Yeah, you can't. So not to make it all about me and to go back to the important point, which is that I think the friendship you have with your dad is amazing. Uh, I think he's a great guy. Even the other day when I turned up with the apple juice and he said uh, he gave a big smile to Miyako. Reminded me a lot of your brother, actually. He does. I think your dad reminds me more of your brother than he does than you in a way. Oh, really? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
Your brother would do that as well if Miyaka was there. Like, you do that as well, but like, I, I feel don't know. like I feel like um, do you know what it is? I think it's, and I've always felt this with Ollie, is um, it, he he will put on an act to appease the people in front of him. He's not, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, maybe that's because I just know he's, like, I just know how he is. He definitely does. And I think, like, one of the biggest struggles I had being friends with him was that, was that I would I would have a confidence with him and then find out that if, if he was around someone else, it wasn't the that same necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that was one of the, <laughs> one of the beauties of getting to become friends with you is I felt like even sometimes at times I remember I'd be thinking like, is Woody, is he gonna, is he gonna dick on me? <laughs> and I think probably maybe once or twice he did, but I'd, I think overall yeah, you, you, you kind of have a, I think loyalty is a big thing for me. Um, but I don't think he does it to be a bad person. I think he just does it in the same way. That I think it's a you, defense mechanism. Yeah. You're shy in some ways. He's shy in others. Yeah. Um, but it's a really interesting thing that you say that about being friends because say my stepdad is like great guy. Like he's brilliant and he's made my mum so happy. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the time, and I do, I, I, I will one day, like when I get married and all these things and I have the moment to call him out and say the man that he is and how brilliant he is, I will. Yeah. But it's always a funny one. Cause like when I go, sometimes I give him a hug, sometimes I shake his hand and it's like this weird thing. Like, but it, it's not weird. I don't ever find it weird, but it, it is weird, but he's more of a dad than anyone has ever been to me. Yeah. Um, and I guess, yeah, having a friendship with someone like that must be brilliant. I don't think, uh, I don't think I like, I'm on that level. I love them, but I don't, I, I don't think necessarily my parents understand my level as well as your dad and, uh, you do, which is a brilliant thing. Yeah. Um... Hopefully I can achieve that with my kids. I, I aim to be that. I aim to be someone that they can always talk to about anything and that they enjoy talking to. That's one of the things I think about the most. Yeah, and do you know and do you know what? So the 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 original thing that I'd said I don't know if I actually said a point, but um this is going back to the way back to the original question of like what is it that you've learned being an adult or whatever is um I now I sometimes worry about my dad and and my mum in some ways, but less less I suppose. But um, oh, I worry about your dad sometimes. Um, <laughs> but I know what you mean. Yeah. But well, just purely because my mum's younger, I suppose. I, I guess when mum is dad's age, I'm going to worry just as much about her as well. But um, well, one thing I would say is I think your dad's very healthy. Oh, he when, he, when he did the census, he probably ticked very good. Oh yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just he's just that he's just uh, he's at the age where it's almost like you can start to see that he's almost worried about it. Um, yeah. and not that he's unhealthy or anything. It's just you know you get to fifty nine years old. Well, and you start I, thinking about these things. I'm going to yo-yo back into Darkland, but don't worry, we're not going down divorced parents' route. But um, mm. you remember when I had my little recruitment job? Oh yeah, Darwin. Yeah. Do you remember what happened in my life at that time? I'm not surprised if you don't, because I don't think about it often. Oh, so my mum, my no, mum had don't. meningitis at oh, the time. Oh yeah, shit, she did. She did. That was fucking and, scary. She was in hospital for a long time. My mum is like, my mum is quite frail in terms of like she has all these pills for different things. And like, I think, like, especially if you can imagine what I explained earlier, and she raised us as a single mum and everything, she's given her heart and soul to this life yeah. and to her family and to me and my brother. Yeah. And I think it's taken a toll on her. But not only that, she teaches violin, which is a physical career to have. Yeah. And she teaches it for the kids, like giving her life as well and giving her hours. Like I remember when I was younger, like be like seven, eight o'clock, she'd be in the lounge teaching violin, like in the evening. And um, so she's qu quite frail, but she is, she's still tough. She's a tough person, you know, really tough. Um, 
but even that i i don't often think about how bad that was and mm. even when it was happening at the time when i was going to work and stuff like that like i remember just googling about it and like looking at the statistics Scaring of people the over different ages that have meningitis and yeah. like just thinking like my mum isn't an a grade health person like yeah. this is fucked and then imagining going to see matt at christmas not my mum and matt yeah. and like all of these horrendous things that i can't imagine and you're so right in the sense that like i guess those relationships you really do have to value and, and that's when i said when i said some things are temporary and some things are forever that's the same i lost my grandma i lost my granddad and they would like if my mum and everyone was like third and fourth like they were like my third and fourth most important people in my life. Like, mm. and they're just gone. And like, yeah. that's it. You know what I mean? Just gone. Poof. That's it. You have the yeah. memories. And I think that's one thing to remember is that they do sounds cringy, but they do live on on you. Like those discussions you have with your dad, like I see them in you every day. Like I might as well be talking to your dad half the time. Yeah. I think you're very similar in, in, in that relationship that you have it's left a mark on you and that's the that's the beauty of it it's not necessarily having the next conversation and having the next day together um the beauty isn't what's happening it's like it's beautiful because it happened i don't know you know what i mean so i guess the worry is um is i'm on to my second cider well, do you know what? I like we're getting into some pretty deep topics here, and I feel like I definitely need another Japanese whiskey. Yeah, that's like, fine. I also that's need fine. to go to the toilet. That's um, fine. We, we can do all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I still but, don't know how you're walking through the garden to go for a piss. Maybe, maybe you just don't want to admit to your dad that you've pissed in the garden. I haven't pissed. I, I haven't pissed in the garden. <laughs> Why are you not? <laughs> <laughs> Why would I, I think... piss in the garden? There's a nice toilet upstairs Why... with a flusher. What? What? You'd rather what? If you had the choice, you'd rather like. I enjoy going for a piss. Girls don't. People that have vaginas, they don't understand what it's like to piss with a penis. I don't either, because I don't stand up. You don't. I don't nah. stand up at night. I don't stand up in the day. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's in some sort of accuracy training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Fuck that. I just want to sit there and just whiz myself away. I'm going to go and do it now. I'm going to forget what I'm going to what I was going to say. No, you were going to say. I was going to say no, nah, but it, we've we've had too much laughter now. Um, let's go get a whiskey and we'll try and get back into the sorrows of the world. Yeah, right, fine. Um, pause at twenty one oh five, which is roughly. Hour and thirty in. <laughs> what? Oh. Ah, here's a cup. When you're working with tools, when you're working with tools. God, this is the benefit of living in a house. I've managed to go for a week and return to the table in that time frame. Rudy will be some lot longer, but if he had pissed in the garden, he'd be back with us straight away, wouldn't he? And these are the uh these are the decisions that one makes when they uh build a shed in their garden. It is a great shed, and I feel sorry for you guys for not actually getting to see it. It's a brilliant, brilliant shed. I did think whilst I was weeing, my voice went high there, I did think whilst I was weeing that um, I don't think that I talked about that divorce story before, 
But if I did, I really hope that as soon as I did, um, you were thinking, oh, God, Tim's divorce stories again. Um, and if you were, maybe you could just comment that. Oh, Tim's divorce stories. And maybe on episode 20 or 25, we'll go even deeper into the divorce. I'm, I'm ready to open the book, seeing as um, all of you lovely fans are clamoring for it. In the meantime, a bit of housekeeping. We did actually have a YouTube comment the other day. And uh, you know what we do when we get a YouTube comment. We have to celebrate. Because most of our YouTube comments are actually little bots saying weird things. But this one, wow, we had 34 views. That's almost, we had 15 on the one before that. That's just on one platform as well. And two thumbs up. Brilliant. Come on. Keep it coming, guys. Keep it coming. I thought that was a controversial one last week with feminism. Uh, but Cy Tran, or Cy Tran, said, Woody's breakdown of hydrogen and the closed system was terrifying. Great podcast, guys. Um, I mean, Cy Tran, that is an incredible comment. Um I don't know who you are. I think that you're probably on Woody and Liza's side of things, but I would like to welcome you as one of our most treasured, if not the most treasured listener to the podcast. You might be listening right now thinking, oh, I don't deserve a shout out, but you do. And we want you to feel welcome. And we want you to know that, you know, other people might listen to this cast. And yes, if you are there, I'm talking about you and not put their foot forward and not comment on our profile page or on our YouTube page. But you, sir, you, something in your heart said, I will leave them a comment. And that's what you did. And I just wanted to say, it means the world to us. And there's no giveaway, you know, there's no prizes for commenting. But there is this shout out right now. And, uh, you know, you can put that on your CV, shout out on the Just Swim cast. Um, you can tell your friends, got shout out on the Just Swim cast. It sounds like Woody's coming back, but um, thank you, Sidetram. Uh. What's he doing? <clears throat> Hello. Hello, let me just um, crack open this packet. You're having a Russell, are you? Yeah. I've got some mini cheds. I've got some McCoy's Ridge Cut Bacon Sizzler. Oh. Flavour Ridge Cut Potato Chips. Just so everyone knows, bacon crisps are shit. They're lovely. I'll do my mini cheddars against yours. i got some frazzles upstairs as well. Oh, yeah. If they're frazzles, then they're actually allowed to be bacon crisps because that's what they are. McCoy's Ridge Cut Bacon Sizzler flavour Ridge Cut Potato no. Chips taste no. exactly like frazzles. The only thing worse out of Ridge Cut in flavour is probably cheese and onion, already salted. But on Ridge Cut McCoy's, you want them in this order. Flame grilled steak, salt and vinegar, Thai chicken... I did see some Thai, thai chicken. Moment. Thai chicken in the in the purple pack. Yeah, I wish I I'd said, gone for those. I said to someone the other day, I went to play golf, and they only had uh, they only had one bag of crisps behind the till, <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, can I get you got any crisps or anything? Snacks? He's like, oh, we've only got these ones. And I was like, he had a whole box of Thai chicken. And I was like, they're, they're my, my favorite. favorite. <laughs> and he's like, we got them just for you. And I was like, I'll take two. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I did my own little bit there whilst you were gone. Oh, did you? Ah, mm -hmm. oh, I missed it. Well, obviously you did. Oh, but I think uh, back. as a potential, it might just have to become the team show. Because uh, <laughs> they, were, they were loving it, honestly. They were loving it. The applause and everything. Yeah. Um, so I've went up, went up to the house. Yeah. Urinated. And... Um, you went upstairs as well. You walked past the downstairs to oh, I'm done. No, 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 no. I went, so went downstairs. Done. I went downstairs. I went downstairs. Oh, God. <clears throat> I thought you were going to say you went upstairs. Oh. No, I poked my head in. To... It's like he's walked past the, the bathroom in the garden, straight past the bathroom in the house. Upstairs. Sorry, continue. Um, poked your head in. Poked my oh. head in the door to where Dad is. He's in yeah. the living room. 
um, noticed that he had What's a little, he doing? little glass of wine. Yeah. Um, watching YouTube. I should get him on the podcast one day. I don't think he'd enjoy it. No? I don't know. He likes just having... So, Dad, Dad is a bit... He's... He likes having the spontaneous thoughts to himself. I don't know. I've I've been around for dinner a few times, and it's always been a good one. Anyway, um, he said he did have a glass of whiskey, and instead of normal water to put with it, he said he added some of the tonic water that we use for the gin. So I've now got a whiskey and tonic water. It's surprisingly nice. Um, it's kind of ruined the taste of the whiskey. Cause you've I'm got... Googling it. People are saying it's a thing. Yeah, it's quite nice. Apparently it's nice with lime as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, I could imagine it would be. I I forgot to cut some lime. So I guess my question was, well, it wasn't really a question. The thing that I had in my mind before we left for the short break was, and it's a thought that I've had, which is a follow-on thought from the previous discussion, which is, will I, when I'm, so I'll, I'll tell you a story first. So the other day, my birthday, my cousin came round, my older cousin. He's 38, nearly. I think he's 38, going on 39 this year. Um, he's married and he's he had a, a baby girl uh, maybe 18 months ago. She's about a year and a half old. I've never seen her before, obviously, because I was in Dubai at the time. Um, and my dad said, when, when, when the little girl came around, Robin, my dad said to me, she looks like Lucy did, who's my other cousin, my other older cousin, when she was a baby. So when they left um, the house, I asked my dad, have you got any pictures of Lucy when she was a baby? And he didn't. But what my dad did have is this old briefcase full of pictures that he had taken throughout his life on a film SLR camera. Mm. <clears throat> and he got me thinking, like, dad can go through, like, and there's pictures of his dad in there. I, I never met uh, my dad's side of uh, my grandparents on my dad's side. They were dead before I could even remember mm -hmm. um, or was even born. And But dad could go through those pictures and go, oh, look, that's my dad. And, like, you know, look at his dad in a picture. And I don't feel like I've got a big enough repository of my family. And you know what my biggest worry is about all this digital shit <clears throat> is, and you know this because you nearly lost your phone the other day, how easy it is to just lose shit, Do especially you know, uh, digital shit. <coughs> and so, I'll end up being 40 years old and going, where's all the pictures of my dad? And getting upset about it. Well, an interesting thing is, is... So... Through the losses I've had, I've had the same thing where I haven't had like this photo to look back on, or yeah. um, you know, a lot of the time, especially when my granddad or my grandma were, my grandma kind of went unexpectedly, uh, even though she was very ill, but fell over, hit her head on the radiator, that was it. Um, but then my granddad, he was in a home, and I always thought that I would. Where I said to myself, I will go there and, and tell him what he means to me. Yeah. Which I didn't need to because looking back, he knew, I think. Yeah. Um, and there were a few times where I saw him and I would always go and like, you didn't have much interaction with him because he was basically just, in his opinion, he was just, he wanted to be dead and go see his wife. Like, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I used to say to him when I left, like, look him in the eye, hold his hand, squeeze it and say, I love you with all of my heart. And make sure he understands. So I used to do that, which felt good. But I didn't have those things. Um, and what was weird 
the other day is I saw someone post, I can't remember who it was, had an Instagram story in Hornchurch Park, which was the back of my granddad's house backed onto that. Uh, They've sold the house now. And I went on Google Maps and I was scrolling through Google Maps on the road and I was backdating the date. And as I looked through the windows, there were all these strange things. Like, so my grandma used to get, you know, the collect the meerkat things from meerkat insurance? Oh, compare yeah. Compare the meerkat? <laughs> oh, yeah. They used to give you these toys. Yeah, yeah, we've got one at home. <laughs> she used to think it was hilarious, so she collected them and put them in the window. <laughs> Brilliant. She stayed. She stayed with. Uh, she stayed with that mortgage provider because they gave toys out. <laughs> Loved it. And she didn't get the toys. She called them up. <laughs> I haven't got Sergey. You know, and uh, <laughs> so I went back to 2002, and Sergey was in the window. Up he popped, <laughs> and I was like, "Ah, oh, there you go." The world is capturing our memories. But then I see. 2005 um, or 2015, whatever, let's go later. The car's gone. So, okay, yeah, the car's gone. That's because my granddad doesn't drive anymore because he's on his own. And then I see, oh, okay, there's loads of mail in the porch. Yeah, that's because he's just, like, cared for and not going to the door and all this stuff. Yeah. And then what was weird is I thought to myself, because my mum said, do I want to go over there when they, before they sell the house? There's nothing there. Like, it's all empty. Yeah. And it'll probably just make you sad. And I thought, yeah, no, I won't do it. My brother went. And uh, I kind of wish that I had. But what I did instead is estate agent me knows that you can go on Rightmove or Zoopla and look at the listing. Yeah. So I went at the sold listing and I looked through all of the rooms. And it was kind of like, it made me realise when I looked at the empty rooms, there's not much in there, not much going on. Like weird carpets that my grandma must have chosen for some reason. And that was it. Nothing in the room mattered. Nothing like a picture of them mattered. The only thing that mattered was that I had had that time. And like, yeah. I think that when those times come if they do come ever, which they will, the beauty is in the having the moment. It's in the journey travelled and it's not in the uh, the result of the end destination, which is inevitable. And and also it's the fact that you have such a glorious relationship. Like, and I think that will suit you throughout life well, mm -hmm. um, you know. So I guess the question that I had was, so I... Um... I only had one grandparent, which was my mum's mum. Mm. Um, and so I've experienced death in the family as well as you have. So I mm. guess the question was that I was going to lead on to was now that you've experienced death in your family, do you think you will, um, I don't, um, maybe it's a bit pointless me asking the question based on what you just said, but um, do you think you will change the way you, prepare for it prepare for my own death not your own death but de other deaths in the family that as you say are inevitable but so well it didn't because my grandma died earlier than my granddad and i didn't suddenly react but then it was different because with my grandma she was always ill and then with my granddad he sort of drifted slowly um yeah, but and the... he wasn't really sane enough for me to have that meaningful conversation. No, but the I so know. I don't know how different I can. Do you mean prepare mentally to not be upset or no? Like what? Um, so going back to the idea of like my dad having a collection of oh, photographs, having photos and things. Yeah, like how? Because well, what I worry is is. Yeah. I will forget. I, like as you don't a, want to be sitting next to someone snapping photos. Like I've got to get one while you're still here. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and they'll be looking in the picture like, far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to sign it as well? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I can show my kids. Look at this picture. That Here's my fingernail. Signed, like yeah, I have look. something to keep. Yeah. Oh. Um. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's that's what like dad has. My dad has that because he like he 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 can throw himself back to those times because he has the images to you know kickstart the neurons in his head to re 
reimagine what it was like being a kid, but yeah. I know that I can't remember. I remember very little about being 16 years old. Yeah. And so I know, like, I know that when I'm 35 years old, 10 years from now, I'm going to remember very little about what's, what I did in, when I was 25. Um, yeah. yeah. And I, I might, I, what I worry is, is that I don't have enough things to trigger memories in the future about my past. Hmm. And I, but wor- they don't, yeah. they don't really do that, though, do they? They, they do. A, a photo- you should have seen my dad. You should have seen my dad going through all those photos. He, it was like, um, it was like a. Uh, it's like an old person going through their photos. You, you know, when they get yeah. their photos out and they go, oh, no, this is a picture of my mum sitting on a bench. Yeah, but sometimes... <laughs> and but it the made him feel is, good about it. Yeah, but a lot of photos, you don't you don't choose the moment looking forwards as a memory. So what I mean by that is, like, there might be a picture of me building Lego when I was, like, nine at my granddad's house or whatever. And I'll look at it and I'll be like, Oh, yeah, I remember sitting there building that Lego. Fuck, do I remember building that Lego? But I do remember something he said to me on this day that was really important. And, like, I think no, it's, but like, you those little the f- memories. You remember the... F- no, but... What? Yeah, it gives you the flavour. It's yeah. the smell. It's the taste. It's yeah, the exactly. Yeah, and sometimes that's more powerful than an actual life lesson or a memory you have of that person yeah. anyway. Um, but, as I say, like, I think you just have to... Would I prepare differently is the question. Um, I think it's just one of those things in life that you can't define, especially if you care about that person. If you lose someone, then it's just it's just that, you know. I, I, a lot of the time when I lose someone, I, uh, I don't, I'm not upset in the immediate. I kind of like calm about it and things like that. But then, like a week later, I'll be curled up in the washing up basket, yeah, like yeah. fucking sobbing my eyes out. But yeah. it's just, it's just how it is. But I mean, if you could know how you were going to die, would you want to know? Um, no. What if they told what? Yeah, but so what if they told you the age? Like, if you knew you were going to die in five years from now, is that not useful information, regardless no. of how horrible it is? No. Really? Correct. Oh, dude, really? Yeah. I think it's a really like I was because um, I would change the way I'd live, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to change the way I live because I know something like I know an outcome of an event. I just want to live. Yeah, that's true. You might actually become something you don't like as well. Yeah. You become like a whore for like adrenaline and doing shit and like, <laughs> uh, got to tick that bucket list. Every yeah, few exactly. days left. Exactly. <laughs> Haven't seen the pyramids. See you later. Right. Yeah. It's not really about that, is it? All right. Um, what, what do you think if you woke up one day and you were a girl, what would you do? All the things that I do now. All the things? Wow, come Masturbate on. Masturbate mainly. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd have to check it out, wouldn't you? I, <laughs> yeah. think, I, I think girls have, um, they have better sexual enjoyment than guys do. Um, uh, otherwise, I'm just really good. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, they definitely do. They have, like, special things so, going on. They can do it over and over. My understanding is... And they've is, got special feelings that we don't. My understanding is, is, is that um, all of the nerves that you have in your penis, in, all of those are concentrated, or the amount of those nerves are concentrated into the small region of the clitoris. So it's basically like amplifying, uh, like, I yeah, don't They know. don't just have that. They have the other thing as well. And then just in general, I think their body is more receptive to like. I think so, yeah. His hand's on my leg. Like. Yeah, they, yeah, I think they are. I'd yeah. be like, there's a hand on my leg. There's a hand on my leg. Oh, put great. it on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I mean? Feminism, come at me. 
Where's my multiple orgasms? Yeah, right? Like, they have it way geez. better than us. Where's the equality in that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so, yeah, you'd have to check that out. You'd, you'd have, have to check to, that out. You'd have to see what's going on. Um, what else would I do? Do the washing up as soon as you walk past the kitchen. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's only a joke. <laughs> it's a poor tasted one. Move on. Um, no, <laughs> I'd probably, I reckon I'd walk around in public and I'd, I'd be really curious to see what the male gaze is. As soon as a man looked at me, I'd look at them and be like, <laughs> and oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Put, put, yeah. An, put an ugly face or like pick my nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I did that the other day, actually. You know, you said, um, you know, <laughs> this is fucking great. Um, you know, you said once that. When the Amazon guy comes, you tickle his finger and <laughs> yeah, then you yeah. were like, oh, no, I don't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, be, I I did it by accident. <laughs> so so he had his hand on the bottom of the parcel and was holding it out to me like a, like a, like a waiter holding drinks. And I knew it was heavy, so I couldn't really receive the parcel by, like, taking the end. So I put my hand underneath <laughs> And like it was only like a little bit of my finger on his <laughs> finger, but because of our conversation, I, <laughs> I had a little. I, I just went, <laughs> <laughs> and he, I saw him walking back towards the lift, and he just like coronavirus wiped his hand on his trousers, and I was just like sitting there holding the box, and I was like. I, I think the universe, because you said you did it, but then you said you don't, and it's stuck in my head the whole time, that whole discussion, because you you turned on it. I was like, why did he say that? He didn't do it. Oh, he's such an entertainer, this boy. And then I've just gone and done it. And I was just like, oh, it did happen, though. But that actually brings me on to... Um, Oh, I didn't God. I didn't bring any topics today, but then five minutes before I had a little dump um of topics and, and I've come off come across with an invention. Okay. My cheek hurts. Great. Um so an invention. So you know at the uh petrol garage you get those gloves that you can optionally wear that people don't, yeah? Yeah. So imagine a latex glove, yeah. But not latex, because latex is a bit meh. I'm sure we can find a better material. <coughs> Sorry. Imagine a glove that goes up to like only the teeny tiniest bit of your wrist is covered. Okay. And okay. it's skin tight. Yeah. Okay. Would I'm you... legit looking at my hand right now. We could all just wear these skin tight gloves when we go out. Oh, your hands would get so sweaty. Nah, I'm sure there's a material. There must be a magical oh, system. But then what's the point of a glove if it's breathable? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, go I on. was just thinking, like, I think there's a better way. Better way and than I... what? Well, what? What's the problem? What is it solving? What are you trying to solve here? Well, it's just like when I leave my flat, I like earlier, there's like a little gibbity bit that I have to turn with my hand. Mm. The other one is like a button that I can just kick with my foot. So I like do this karate kick every time I leave the building, <laughs> um, which was great. Nearly took out a delivery driver. Um, but. <laughs> But so yeah, so I had to twist this thing and I used my like coat jacket to do it, but then my coat jacket slipped and my thumb was on it. And oh. I was like, Oh, I looked at that Scott thumb Corona. and I was like, God, glad I don't really use my thumbs for much, but if I do, geez, I'm fucked. And um I just thought to myself, it was like, ding! Skin tight gloves. Just came to me. So uh yeah, patterned it and uh gonna be a millionaire. Isn't that what latex gloves are though? Well, they're not quite skin tight, are they? Uh, they're pretty damn close. Yeah, but I want a glove that's so thin. What would be better? That you can't no, even no, no, see no. it. Like, yeah, it's just so, not so there. What you don't, what you want is you don't want gloves. What finger want... things. No, no, no. You don't want finger things. What you want is like a liquid <laughs> in a pot. Like you know when you do. Um, you know when you, have you ever seen on YouTube? Have you ever been recommended the videos where they're doing like where the they're pu the putty molding, like the gel? No, where they're like dipping car parts in like carbon oh, fiber. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you need. You need like that where you just dip your hands yeah, in exactly. this liquid. You dip your hand in that, take and it out, and, and your yeah. hands are covered in like something. Yeah, exactly. Like a, like a gel. Yeah, a glover. That's yeah. what we we'll call it, the glover. 
And then you'll get home and there'll be a deglover. You put your hand in another thing of acid. And it's just melt it all off. <laughs> Bit of acid, yeah. I think we solved it. No need for masks. I so the recovery, don't, don't I think really the uh, the final topic I'd like to cover is the uh, to give everyone an update that um, we started this podcast in a sort of slump of lockdowns in the UK, coronavirus, really wanting to get guests on to see, uh, you know, what's going to be happening with you. How have you found the lockdown? But we're actually that... kind of winding down now. Yeah, and... time's passed, I think. Well, having said that, one of the main things we've talked about is how this will linger. And now is the interesting time. <clears throat> I think lockdowns are kind of boring in a way to examine coronavirus. <clears throat> you can only do it on Twitter and online. Now we're going to get to see what the real world's like. Yeah. It's just going to be interesting, right? A lot of things are going to have to change. I just want to go to a pub. Yeah. I kind of want to. That green man's calling me. Do you know what? I I really worry that when the 29th comes, it's just going to be rammed. Like the whole of April. Yeah. You're going to go to a pub and you will not be able to get a seat. Mm-hmm. I'd have to just go in the day, though. I'll happily book a few days off and just, like, that's what I'll do, I guess. I just, yeah, I start work on the 6th of April, so... Yeah, but if I if I take the job, at least this time, I like I don't know, like work is work. That word <laughs> has changed a lot for me over the last few years. Yeah, even I... next week, I'm like going off to play golf, take a day off. Great. Are you going to play with golf, your brother? Yep. Uh... Yeah. By the way, if we do want to play, we're gonna to have to book because everyone's gonna be like oh, yeah, clamoring for a slot, dog and they're all thirty game. quid. Even in the day, they put the prices up. Mm-hmm. That's it. I wonder how many things are they now can. more Of course now they more can valuable. put the prices yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A bit of pint in the pub's like 100 quid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got to make their money back, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, um, do you know what? I don't remember the last riddle. Yeah. Um, and we didn't conclude the last riddle in the last episode either. <laughs> but isn't that the best part of a riddle? Just so. like Not I hope knowing. there's a lot of people out there in the world just like ah, oh, I just wish they'd tell me what the riddle was. I don't, I don't think there's anyone thinking that. <laughs> yeah, there is. I've been speaking when when you went away. I had a little chat with our audience. They're great. When I went away, when did I go away? <clears throat> well, if you'd weed in the garden, you wouldn't have gone away. But because you went into the house and you're not in the house, there was a little, oh, okay. a little bit where I could get in with the audience. Okay. Um. So I guess I'll I'll, I'll uh. Rather than read out what the answer was to the comment, I'll read out a uh, a new one with the also like the caveat that it might not be answered, so don't really put too much time into it. If you think of the answer right away, good for you. If not, forget about it. This is you, dude. Uh, I'm sorry. I was about to read this one. Yeah, this is like the easiest thing ever. A dish that consists of a rolled tortilla, typically with a filling of beef or chicken and served with chilli sauce. That's that's not a riddle, is it? That's just like talking about some kind of Mexican food, enchiladas, tacos, whatever. Yeah. So I'm going to browse by category and go to difficult because that was stupid. Right, okay. <clears throat> it's not really a riddle. It's just like, that's just a normal question. <laughs> that's stupid. Um... Oh, don't tell me. Right. What contains zero calories, but if you consume it, you will probably gain weight? Repeat. What contains zero calories, but if you consume it, you will probably gain weight? A gold bar. Well, you don't want to be consuming that, do you? Isn't it? It's so stupid. You could put a million things for that. Well, you said it. Well, they said it was a difficult one. I just chose the top one on this website. What's the answer then? Lead. <laughs> so I was close. Well, no, you were correct as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about water? Does water have calories? Uh, don't know. Don't, I doubt, don't and what, is, what does you will probably gain weight? 
probably. If you ate how, lead, how, you would definitely gain weight. How does probably come into it? Yeah, that's a shit one. Vote down, that's medium. What is up that's also down? What's a smile and a frown? What? I just read the answer. That's a brilliant one. 